One, two, three, four. If I were to ask you about the show Mission Hill, would you be able to answer me? If you were an avid fan of Adult Swim in the early 2000s, then maybe. Chances are you would remember it as that oddly colored show about living in the city and not much else. Or perhaps you wouldn't be able to say anything at all, because the show didn't have much of a splash when it initially aired. Well, here's the rundown. In the early 2000s, the WB Network decided to branch out the demographic of their animated cartoons by making some shows aimed at adults. This led to the creation of Baby Blues, The Oblongs, and Mission Hill, all of which did not last longer than one season in 1999 through 2001. Mission Hill in particular only had six of its 13 produced episodes aired due to low ratings. Then, in 2001 through 2003, during what is known as the swimming pool era, Adult Swim began to air shows that were canceled prematurely and gave these shows a chance to run episodes that were previously unseen, such as the aforementioned cartoons. Thanks to Adult Swim's ability to experiment with both original and off-the-wall content, we now know of many of these shows today, some of them achieving a cold status. In fact, The Oblongs has some buzz surrounding a possible reboot to this day, and of course the well-known Family Guy revival and Futurama revival. So on with the discussion of the show. Mission Hill's premise is that Andy, a 24-year-old slacker and aspiring cartoonist, lives in a trendy neighborhood in a city that is based off of Boston, New York, and San Francisco. His 17-year-old brother, Kevin, moves in with him from the suburbs, and his sheltered, nerdy personality clashes with the inner city atmosphere. Amongst them are colorful characters including the gay couple in their 60s, the artistic progressive young couple, and the roommates, Jim and Posey. Jim is similar to Andy in that the two have a slacker attitude, but Jim himself works in a successful career while Andy works in a dead-end retail job. Posey is characterized as a flower child, but embodies and undermines the hippie stereotype at the same time. Yeah, I was going to give them to charity, but where is the fun in that? I want to make some money. <laughs> The reason why I chose to do a video on this show is because, while it is almost two decades old, it can heavily apply to what millennials are going through today, possibly even more so than Generation X. There are two episodes that resonate the most with me, Unemployment Part 2 and Happy Birthday Kevin. First, a brief look at Unemployment Part 2. Andy loses his job and begins to collect unemployment, enjoying his free time and free money. He begins to care less and less about taking care of himself and eventually gives up altogether, not bothering to eat well or even brush his teeth. It isn't until his friend, Jim, shows him his job and all of the young people around him putting forth effort to succeed that he realizes his life is going nowhere. Andy then decides to accept Jim's help in getting a new job and to stop living off the government. It's a pretty good episode that many contemporary viewers of the show took as a wake-up call. Some say that when they were young, they would vow to never turn out like Andy, but today many 20-somethings had dreams that they thought they would have achieved by now, only to realize they haven't done anything to get there. It's a sobering thing to come to terms with, and this show resonates with the newer generation just as it may have in the past. Dreaming is easy, it's waking up that's hard. But my main focus is Happy Birthday Kevin. In a not so subtle way, Kevin announces that it's his birthday, and the parents strong arm his older brother Andy into throwing him a party in the style to which he is accustomed to when he was a child. This, of course, leads Kevin to want an extravagant affair complete with presents, friends, and endless attention and praise, insisting that that's how it's always been, and how it should be. Andy, instead, decides to take it upon himself to give Kevin a more realistic representation of what the real world holds for him when he is no longer under the care of his parents. Later, Kevin comes home from a terrible day, complete with... You smashed my porch! That is a fine, expensive porch! Pay me! Hey, pay me, yuppie man! Hey, hey, I'm talking to you! <clears throat> Whew, crazy world, huh? Well, don't let it get you down, son. I... Penis, 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 penis. <laughs> and reflects. Why can't things be normal like they were back home? Why does everything here have to be crazy and strange? 
Andy sees this and has a change of heart, deciding to put forth some effort into throwing him a decent party, spending his own funds after he squandered the money his parents gave him. They go bowling, go to dinner, and a Blues Brothers ripoff show. Despite the effort and everyone else having a good time, Kevin is not pleased with the celebration or his gifts, and finally Andy unloads how he feels. That's it. You know, I busted my ass to throw you a really cool party. I spent 300 bucks of my own money. I dragged you and these losers all over town. And all you do is bitch and whine and pick it apart like you were Truman McFreakin' Capote! Oh yeah? Well, maybe I didn't want this kind of party. Back home! Shut up! I'm out of here. Happy birthday. Kevin tries to tell Andy how it's supposed to be but he doesn't take it and leaves. Thinking he has returned to their apartment, he looks for him, but then finds out... The last thing he said was that he was going home. Home, huh? In one of the most real moments from the show, Andy finds his brother in their old family home in the suburbs, and a profoundly moving you know. scene occurs. <sighs> this cake isn't as good as I remember. Nothing out here is as good as I remember. Not even home. Kevin's memories are just that memories. He can try to recreate what he once had by adding all of the components, the house, the cake, and the location, but it's just not the same. Times have changed. He's growing up and he has to leave the past behind him. This resonated with me so much because I can't begin to describe how many times I have felt this way when I was the same age. Home isn't the same. What I used to like, I don't anymore. It's something I went through when I was his age, and I'm sure you felt it too. With such a revelation, it's easy to feel a bit down or depressed, not ever being able to go back. But in an excellent way, the show managed to give us something to look forward to. Who cares? They're not around to say anything. <laughs> How many times did Dad bust me for this, huh? No TV for a week, young man. I'm peeing in the shower. Hey, everybody, I'm peeing in the shower. A newfound freedom that comes with getting older. Sure, the things they do depicted here are no big deal, but the idea is the same. Becoming an adult and being a dependent can be a wonderful thing. The ability to make your own decisions and your own mistakes is all part of the life experience. In a time when nostalgia is so popular, it's easy to assume that many people share the sentiment. We all want to relive a time we hold so dear, but we can't recreate it. It only exists as a memory. There are times you may have felt the same as you did back then, but only for a moment, and then it was gone. That's what I feel when I watch this show sometimes. I feel like the 10-year-old kid in her bedroom watching this show at night with the volume turned down low so my parents won't hear since I'm supposed to be asleep. I don't feel that way anymore because I'm an adult now and I don't have to do that. This is such a great show that never got the chance that it deserved. It is one of the last animated shows to use traditional cell animations as opposed to digital animation. Someone did a pretty good retrospective on this show that I came across while researching for this video, which is linked down below. Check it out, or even the show itself, if you have the time because this show is definitely a gem. A gem that came out during a time that the world just began to change for so many millennials and accurately depicted it in its short run. And that is the profound realism of Mission Hill.